So in this week's session, we're going to continue our development of uh, techniques using subdivision for space planning in architecture. So last week, we started this topic and we looked at the concept of recursion and recursive algorithms and saw how we can use recursive algorithms to model complex kind of stepwise behaviors um, that rely on applying the same simple operation repeatedly to a set of smaller and smaller parts. And we looked at that in a demo when we modeled uh, the process of a branching tree. Um, so last week we looked at um, basically developing a recursive system uh, model based on specifying a small set of rules. So here we had rules for uh, basically what happens at a particular point in the tree and the behavior can be basically do nothing to stop the branching, branch once or branch twice. And then we saw how we can start to develop these complex um, results out of these systems by basically starting with uh, a single point and then recursively ap applying this process through rules um, step by step. And so each time we apply a rule, it starts with a point, it creates other points. And then from the um, points, resulting from one process, we can apply the rules again to grow this tree step by step. And the cool thing about a recursive system like this is that we can generate pretty complex results, like the final models can be very uh, complex, uh, like these uh, branchy trees, uh, but they're driven by a combination of just a small set of parameters and these baked in rules. So it's the rules, these three rules, plus these five parameters create this tree. So this is a, creates a really good advantage in generative design because it allows us to create uh, fairly complex design spaces, uh, which can be controlled by a small set of parameters. So we can basically represent a lot of different variation in our models, but then discover or any other optimization algorithm actually doesn't have to work that hard to uh, permutate through the design space and explore all the different options. Uh, because all discover will be um, tasked with doing is just flipping these five parameters back and forth. But based on those parameters, you can actually get a lot of different variation uh, in what the final outcome of the model uh, looks like. So what we're going to do this week is we're going to take the exact same approach, but now instead of using a recursive system to model uh, a, a process of growing a branching tree, we're going to apply the same concept now to subdividing a space. And this is going to lead us into our discussion and modeling of a floor plan through a process of subdividing um, a, a starting space over and over to create a set of smaller spaces within. So the basic idea of subdivision is this, uh, you start with a boundary shape. So this can be like the shape of your footprint of your floor plan. And then you model the process of just splitting the space once to generate from one space, two spaces. So after the first division, you basically start with one space and you result with two spaces. And you can see that here we can control different properties of how the subdivision gets done. So in this case, we can split the spaces vertically. And we can also set the ratio between the spaces, right? We can say that this space is 60% um, uh, of the starting original. And the key here is that the process uh, is modeled recursively so that we don't just split once. Once we do the original split, we can repeat that process for the spaces um, that result, right? So in this case, we create two spaces and then we take the first space uh, and split it again. And we can apply this process recursively, but now instead of starting from a point and growing, we're actually starting from a shape and cutting it recursively uh, to develop our final spaces. So let's look at this process step by step and again, look at how we can actually parametrize this model because it's not enough to just represent a model that can take a space and cut it into a bunch of parts. We want to be able to control the final layout of the space, but like any recursive system, we kind of abstract that control so that the parameters aren't dictating exactly what the final spaces look like. They're just dictating how the rules of our model uh, get applied. So here I have a kind of step-by-step -step diagram of this recursive subdivision process. On the left, we're gonna see the space layout uh, that we're gonna form. Um, on the right, we're gonna actually look at the parameters that can drive that subdivision process. And in the middle, we're gonna represent that process of subdivision um, actually as a what, what we call a decision tree. Right? So last week we looked at literally creating a tree through recursion. Uh, but in fact, we can rep represent any kind of recursive process um, 
in a kind of tree-like diagram uh, that represents how we actually make each of those decisions step by step. So the decision tree becomes a kind of conceptual diagram of the process that we took uh, to create a certain layout. And onto that tree, we can actually visualize uh, the parameters and how they make those decisions. Um, so we start with uh, our boundary space. So we have one space. And our tree starts as just a single node uh, in the tree, the root, what we call the root node. And here's the space. And in terms of parameters, we have uh, two different parameters that can control the system. Right. In, in last week's demo, we had just one parameter because all the parameter is doing was choosing which rule to apply to the starting node at each step. But now we can uh, imagine two separate parameters that drive that decision at each step. So we can have one parameter which controls the direction of the split. And to make this easier, let's just imagine two possible directions, uh, horizontal and vertical. And we're going to map this as a categorical parameter. Um, where zero represents a horizontal split and a one represents a vertical split. And this is literally how we're going to map these um, two parameters and discover once we start developing our models. And then the second set of parameters, so this first set of parameters only um, controls the splitting direction. And now we need another set of parameters which controls the distance at which the split happens, right? So whichever direction we choose, we can control the ratio of the size of the resulting spaces uh, to each other. So the idea here is we have two sets of parameters and um, each uh, subdivision step, we pull one parameter out of these sets. So when we uh, do this in Discover, we're gonna have the same number of parameters uh, of each type and the number of parameters will dictate how many steps of uh, subdivision we actually take. And in this case, we're going to represent the split distance or the ratio between the spaces as a continuous parameter in the range of zero to one. So zero will be kind of all the way uh, on one side, right? So one space is basically uh, filling the whole resulting area and then 0.5 will be like an even split and uh, all possibilities in between. So we're going to kind of remap whatever shape of that starting space is onto this range of zero to one. So once we uh, have the, the starting uh, boundary, we can do the first subdivision. And let's say in this case, we chose our parameters to be one and that corresponds with a vertical uh, split and split distance 0.6. So we basically do the division of this uh, space with a vertical division and the first space takes 60% uh, of the area. And you can see here how we can represent that uh, action in the decision tree, right? We take the first node and we can actually put the parameters that we used into that node. So this says uh, vertical 0.6 and we produce two new spaces. So those two new spaces are, not, are now represented as nodes in our decision tree. And here we're keeping track of our parameters. And now we can basically apply that, recur um, that subdivision process recursively to our model. So here we resulted in two spaces, one and two. And now we choose the second space, apply the same process, and you can see how we actually represent this recursive process now as a tree, even though we're not modeling a tree, it's still a good way to show sort of how we can apply that process over and over again uh, in the model. And in this case, uh, we start with this space over here and we split it horizontally um, using a, a split distance of 0.5 that will basically split the, the space in half. And now we, in the tree, we uh, uh, create two new spaces. And so if we number them, we get one, which is the product of the first split, and then two and three are the products of the second split. And again, we're keeping track of these parameters. So when we model this in Grasshopper later in the session, um, Discover is going to actually input uh, these two sets of parameters, and each set of unique parameters is going to result in a different uh, subdivision of the space. And so once we're done subdividing, we have this kind of final layout and final decision tree. And if you look at the tree, every node that was subdivided now stores the parameters. So those are kind of intermediate nodes, right? Those spaces no longer exist because they've been further split. And if we want to find out which spaces we have left in the layout, we have to look at the terminal nodes of the graph. So the terminal nodes uh, of the graph or the tree are basically the ones that were not further split. And that will tell us what spaces uh, we have left. And so now, just like with the tree example, 
we can modify these parameters, right? The parameters become our kind of con uh, controls of the model. And just by modifying these parameters, we can start to create lots of different iterations of our tree, right? You can see how um, the layout and the tree have this kind of relationship with each other, right? One's the kind of abstract representation of, uh, of the layout itself. Okay, so now let's take a look uh, at how we can actually model uh, this splitting logic in Grasshopper. So I'm gonna walk through a few slides that show the kind of computational geometry logic that we're gonna use. And then we're gonna switch over to the actual demo where we're gonna build up this logic uh, first in Grasshopper using just Grasshopper components. And that's gonna allow us to visually put together the logic for just doing one split operation. So taking a boundary curve and splitting into two. And then once we do that, we're actually gonna take the same exact approach and now we're gonna code it in Python. And the reason we do that is number one, we can um, represent the exact same logic. Uh, so by itself, it doesn't really add anything, but once we put it into Python, we can wrap it into a function and then we can apply that function recursively to create that kind of series of subdivisions, which is something that we wouldn't be able to do uh, with Grasshopper, just because Grasshopper doesn't really allow these kind of recursive feedback logics, right? Everything in Grasshopper kind of happens all at once. So if you wanted to model this splitting happening once, you can do it, but if you wanted to model it kind of 10 times, you know, you'd have to actually copy and paste that definition 10 times in your script. And you wouldn't really be able to do this kind of parameterized process, right? You wouldn't be able to say like in one iteration, you take the first space and keep splitting it and another iteration you do with the second one. But with Python, we have this flexibility um, of, of a programming language to actually um, be a lot more specific about the process we want to take. And we can do cool things like, um, like these recursive algorithms. So uh, first we're going to develop the script in Grasshopper, then we're going to transfer it to Python. And finally, we're going to take our um, recursion uh, or our, our subdivision definition in Python, we're going to wrap it into a function and then we're going to be able to apply it recursively uh, to create um, a kind of uh, progressive subdivision of spaces to, to take one space and create any number of kind of subspaces from it. So the basic geometric logic we're going to take is we're going to start with a boundary curve. Now in the previous slides, we looked at simple rectangular spaces, but once we start developing this, gra this in Grasshopper, we can actually develop it in a way where we can start with any kind of boundary curve. So this time, I'm starting with a kind of more complex um, boundary, um, which is actually rotated. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, we need to sort of normalize the space in which we're working with. So we're gonna take that boundary curve and we're gonna create a bounding box around it. Now that bounding box is gonna give us a, a base point at the lower left corner of the shape. And now based on our parameters, Right, we're gonna have this set of parameters that are driving our uh, subdivision process. We're gonna take the first set of parameters uh, from the list. And based on those parameters, we're gonna move that base point over, you know, and if we're splitting it vertically, we're gonna move that point to the right. And we're gonna move it based on that second parameter. So if the parameter is 0.4, we're gonna move it sort of 40% of the way over um, uh, relative to the, the whole horizontal width of the bounding box. Then we're gonna take that point and move it vertically, the whole uh, span of the bounding box in the other direction. That's gonna give us two points, which we'll use to construct our dividing line. And once we have that dividing line, because it's based on the bounding box, we can be sure that that line will split that shape. And so once we do the split, we'll create uh, two new closed shapes. So that's kind of the entire splitting logic, right? And remember with any recursive process, it's, it needs to be self-similar, meaning that we have one function that starts with something and ends up with one or more of those same type of things, right? Because if we connect, if we create this end-to-end -end process that takes something and results in more of those things, then now we can apply that recursively on those results. So in this case, we're gonna start with one space and every time we split, we're gonna end up with two new spaces. And then once we do that, now we can apply that same process over and over again. So we can, for example, take one of these spaces, split it again. You can see here the parameters might be different and do that over and over again 
Uh, and we're going to do it basically until we run out of parameters, in which case uh, we're going to return our final space layout. Uh, in this case, we applied the recursive logic three times, which resulted in four uh, spaces. And finally, once we build up our entire logic, uh, we're going to be able to uh, hook up our model to discover. And now discover will uh, create those parameters for us. And we're going to tie it to some objectives in our model. So for example, we can uh, ask discover to create a subdivision. In this case, we're dividing shape into 10 spaces. And we can ask discover to program those division parameters in such a way that the spaces we get at the end are as similar to each other as possible in terms of area or squares possible or other kinds of uh, metrics. So you can see here the results of uh, one optimization of our final model where we're asking the spaces to be kind of uh, similar in area and also uh, as square as possible. And that's where we're gonna leave off today. And then next week, we're gonna take this model and develop it further uh, by adding um, uh, information to the model, not just in terms of how the spaces get split, but as we split, we're going to store information about which spaces are touching each other and to create this kind of uh, adjacency data in our subdivision so that we can start to plan these spaces with actual programs and start to optimize our floor plan layouts for actual distribution of floor plans uh, in, in, the, uh, in our building.